Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today we're talking about femininity and masculinity and objective personality's new coin. So objective personality is one of the first personality models to track for femininity and masculinity and more specifically they track for femininity and masculinity in decision making and femininity and masculinity in the sensory. So masculinity or masculine people are people that are uh, properly have a masculine decider and masculine sensory. A feminine person is a person that has them feminine deciders and feminine sensory. So what does that mean? What does it mean to be masculine or feminine? Why do we even track these things? Well, first of all, to understand these concepts, I decided to look through a ton of literature on masculinity and femininity. Yeah, I studied the big five differences, studied patterns and connections on masculine and femininity and personality traits. And to learn more about them and if to hear about my conclusions, continue to watch the video. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy what I have to say. So... Femininity, masculinity, the biggest pattern of them all is assertiveness and turbulence. Yeah, femininity and masculinity is actually not that different or that far out from the definition of being neurotic or of being emotionally stable. What the key difference between men and women seem to be this. Women experience anxiety and fear more often than men. That doesn't mean that they can't be brave or courageous or bold, but it means that they have a stronger and more personal relationship to fear and anxiety. They experience mood swings more often and they reflect more about what's going to happen and they are more aware of consequences in decision making and in taking action. So when you talk about femininity and masculinity, you must account for this. What objective personality says is, you are masculine if you like to push on the tribe or push on the sensory. You are feminine if you prefer to move with or flow with the tribe and flow with the sensory. That's my own word for it, flow with it. Uh, the way I see it or the way I interpret the term push is break against, to ignore the existing flow or existing ideas or viewpoints in the tribe and to shove or push or break against the traditions or the views or the opinions of the tribe. What happens when you have a masculine decider is you say what is on your mind with little regard for what other people are thinking. You break against the flow. When you have a feminine decider, instead what happens is you move with the opinions of the tribe. That does not mean that you change your mind to fit the group, but it does mean that you work with what you've got. Okay, there are these people in the group that have these beliefs and these opinions. What can I say or do to influence and to move with and move forward with the group on these matters? Similarly, if you have masculine sensory, you are more likely to break against or move <laughs> in spite of the sensory construction or the fabric of reality <laughs> to use a large word. In short, if uh, there are things in your way, you're more likely to move past them or push them aside rather than to move around it. Imagine um, <laughs> that there are things or problems or sensory issues that have to be dealt with. If you're masculine sensory, basically your path is forward. You ignore whatever is ahead of you, whatever things you have to move or the things you have to uh, push aside in order to get where you want to. You just do it. You just go the straight route. If you're feminine sensory, you look and study what's on in your surroundings and you move with and flow with the sensory and rather than try to push it or uh, push against it somehow, you just move around it. You find ways around problems rather than directly confronting them. I believe if you want to talk about and use these terms as masculinity or femininity, you have to show that these terms have patterns that are more common within men. So you would like to see then that men are more likely to have masculine traits and women are more likely to have feminine traits. You don't need to say that all women have feminine traits. Neither do you need to say that all men have masculine traits, but you do want to see that 
the patterns apply more on men in general and <laughs> that feminine patterns apply more in general for women. Otherwise, it would make no sense. Then you'd have to come up with another term for it because if it has nothing to do with gender, then why use the term to begin with? I'm not sure these patterns and these connections actually apply to masculinity and femininity, but I would like to work with the hypothesis <laughs> by <laughs> the hypothesis that it does. Why? Okay, first of all, if it is true, and it seems to be true, that men are less turbulent, less neurotic, and women are more likely to be uh, a neurotic or to experience mood swings or fear, then it also goes that a person that has a higher degree of fear or more is more prone to mood swings is going to be less likely to break against the tribe or to put themselves in a situation where they will cause or experience problems. They are going to take action to avoid conflicts and to avoid problems. <laughs> they are going to be uh, more risk aware. They're going to be more careful and more cautious in their approach. And if you are more emotionally stable or more assertive, then it makes sense that you'd say things and you'd say things that would get you into conflicts with the tribe. It would make sense then that you would sometimes be overconfident, you'd uh, act without thinking, you'd break a few bricks getting forward, uh, you might push people or uh, get into a conflict load or heated situation or you might uh, get more handsy with people because yeah, you don't experience the same emotional risk awareness that uh, people that are more neurotic do. So, are there these patterns real? Does this make sense? Honestly, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. I'm still reading about it. But this is where I am right now. And uh, this is how far I've gotten with understanding and breaking down the OP concepts. What are your thoughts on feminine and masculine types and femininity and masculinity and what makes sense to you? Thank you for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.